Hello and welcome to the Magical Travel Adventure Podcast. Just as a reminder, I am Lauren, your host, and uh, this is a podcast, but I also put it up on the YouTube, YouTube channel, Magical Travel Adventure, so you can check it out there. All my information is below if you would like to reach out. I am also a travel advisor with Carry on the Magic. And that information is below if you need any help planning your next vacation. Today, I am going to talk a little bit about cruising and some myths that revolve around cruising because as 2022 has started, we've had like this roller coaster of uh, do people want to cruise? Do they not want to cruise? Is there COVID? Is there not COVID? Is it a big deal? Is it not a big deal? All those types of things are coming up. So I have gotten a lot of interest lately in cruising. So I want to talk about some of the common misconceptions I get when someone in the group or part of the group says certain things about why they don't want to cruise. So the number one thing I get, which is kind of odd right now, is it's going to feel so crowded on my cruise. I could tell you right now, especially right now, like March, 2022, it's not that crowded on your cruises. They're still not at full capacity. However, obviously that's going to change when you're cruising at full capacity. Let's say it's a sold out cruise. And I'm thinking Royal Caribbean has some cruise, um, ships that are over 5,000 people. It's a very large ship. So the larger the ship, the more spaces for people to go, the smaller the ship, I don't want to say there's less places to go, but there's less people that need more space to move around. What that means is if you're used to going to a hotel, you wouldn't always expect, and it's a very popular hotel. You're not going to expect that there's no one ever at the pool. Obviously there are going to be people at the pool. Yes. On days where it's um, a cruising day and there's no port. Yes. The pool might be more crowded. However, different people are doing different things at different times on the ship. So it's just like everywhere where else, when the pool first opens, you know, people start to come out and then it gets busier during the day. And as the day winds down, less and less people are there, you know, everyone has their own space. Everyone's doing their own thing. Everyone has their own schedule or, you know, everyone's just relaxing on a cruise. So even though there might be a lot of people on a cruise, you're not going, everyone is not going to be in the same spot at the exact same time. So even getting on and getting off the ship, not everyone is getting on at the exact same time and not everyone is getting off at the exact same time. So you're not going to find a completely empty ship because cruise lines don't work like that, but there's definitely space for all the people to go to. So you definitely have space to spread out and not be around so many people all the time. Number two, cruising is only for old people. Ugh. If you think cruising is only for old people, you're missing out on a lot. And then these old people must be doing some really fun stuff because different cruise lines offer so much entertainment on their cruise ship. There are go-karts. There are water slides, there are actual like rides, there's ice skating rinks, there's bumper cars, there's basketball, there's mini golf, there's um, skydiving. It's like simulated skydiving, not actual <laughs> skydiving. I should point that out. Um, you know, there's so many different types of activities that I would actually say families are one of the number one groups that cruise. So that would be another thing. And this is an awesome way for your friends to travel. Like whatever age you are, there is a cruise line out there for you. There is a specific thing. If you have no kids, there are some cruise lines that are better for you. If you have kids, there are obviously good cruise lines for you. If you're multi-generation, there's great cruise line options for you. If you're a solo traveler, they have solo cabins for certain ships and certain fleets. So there is something for everyone. It's not just for old people and it's 
old people. And I'm putting that in quotes. You can't see that because you're not watching it, but you know, everyone, as long as you're six months or older, you can cruise. And there are so many great options out there for you that I would never want you think to think like, oh, you know, that's just for the older people. If that's a concern of yours, then we would steer you towards specific ships as opposed to maybe ships that skew a little older. There are ships that skew a little older and are made specifically for an older generation. So you just want to maybe not go on those and you want some more of the fun types of activities that are on a cruise ship is I'm going to feel claustrophobic on a ship. Typically when people say that it's, there's two reasons. The first reason is they think that the stateroom that they're going to get is so small. It's a very easy fix. If you think that that's going to be an issue is you don't get an inside cabin. Obviously an inside cabin would not have even a window to the outside, but it would also, if you're afraid of being claustrophobic, I, I would suggest though, that you move out of an interior stateroom and go at minimum to an ocean view, but I really think a balcony stateroom might help you just because you have that outdoor space that you can access at any point if you really think that way, but it doesn't feel claustrophobic. Sometimes in the hallways, it does feel tight by the staterooms. Again, that is a fix that you can make it that you're right by the stairs. So you don't have to go down narrow hallways, but there are hardly any narrow hallways in general to get to other places on the ship. They're very open and there's outside space and you don't really even know that you're traveling on the ocean half the time when you're out at sea. The cruise industry has come very far and has updated a lot of its ships, come out with new ships, and produced ships that don't feel like they used to. I can attest to that I have been on a cruise in the 90s, in which <laughs> I, we were basically like the whole time, it was a seven-day cruise, and we were basically avoiding a hurricane the whole time. So the waves were very large, and it was very out of character for the season that we were going in. Um, it was a uh, December cruise. So it's not really hurricane season in December. And there was a hurricane. Um, and we were just like following this hurricane. We were like avoiding the hurricane the whole time. And it was horrible. The ship rocked so much and we were low and closer to the middle of the ship. And I was sick probably the, in the entire time on that ship. Since then, Ships had, I don't want to say since my, since the nineties, but pretty much like since 2000, they really have improved ships really figured out what causes that motion part of the cruise. So that when you are cruising, even if there is rockier conditions, you might feel it a little bit, but not as much as even you used to feel it on a cruise and it's very calm. So you don't feel like I have to get off the ship. That's normally when people feel sick or feel the motion of the ship. That's when they want to get off. But that claustrophobic feeling, there's so much outside space. You can always go outside. There are decks where it's all, you know, you could just be outside and being in that outside air helps also. So you can use that also. People are afraid of getting sick. They're not just afraid of getting seasick. They're afraid of getting COVID or any other disease, you know, on a cruise ship. They just think it's, you know, a bunch of people that have all these diseases that are traveling around and you come home with a disease automatically. If there's anyone who knows about being seasick, it is me. My whole family, they're like sailors and I did not get the sailing gene. <laughs> so um, my cousin is in the Coast Guard, her husband is, my uncle was a huge sailor. Going on a cruise ship for the first time, I didn't really know what to expect. And like, I couldn't even walk on the cruise ship. Like I was like jostled all around. I had to take seasick pills all the time. I think like day, it was seven days. I think like day four was the first day I ate. Um, so my first cruise was not enjoyable because of that. When I was pregnant, I was in the hospital because I was sick all the time also. So 
you know, I don't have, I have like almost very little tolerance for any type of motion or see like anything could cause me to be seasick. And I will say on a cruise ship, I don't find that as much anymore. It's much calmer for me there. I will say what I do avoid is I avoid times and places where I know it's going to be rougher waters because I don't, I don't want to set myself up. And my other big thing, if you really think you're going to be seasick is you really have to try and be in the middle of the ship that will help you a great deal. And it will kind of ease your mind that you're not like tipping back and forth. You know, if you're in the center, like if you're in the center of the seesaw, you're hardly moving. I'm doing this showing you in person, but if you're listening, you can't hear it, but it's just like a seesaw. If you're in the center of the seesaw, you're not moving up and down. Like you would, if you're the people on the sides going up and down, that's like a cruise ship. I will say that there are so many great tips and tricks for seasick being seasick. And, um, there are pills, there are bands, there is stuff that you could put behind your ears. All those things have helped me in the past. And I haven't really, I always do them just in case, because I just want to make sure I'm okay. And especially now, now that I'm cruising with my child, I really want to make sure I'm okay. Um, but it's definitely, I, I hardly ever feel it on any of the ships anyways. So I, it's not really a concern of mine anymore. It's very important that you wash your hands. And a lot of times before you go into places, you have to wash your hands before you do it, before you go in any place, like before you go in to eat, before you go into the buffet, before you go into those places, you have to wash your hands, not use hand sanitizer, but physically wash your hands. And I know this sounds silly, but you washing your hands does help. I will also say in the buffets on cruise, most cruise lines right now, they are serving you the food at the buffet, as opposed to everyone touching the same handles and all that stuff. So that is also helping. I will say that certain cruise lines have better ratings with cleanliness than others. There are some cruise lines I will not sell because their cleanliness standards are not up to what I would be willing to put. If I won't go on it, then I'm not willing to put someone else on it. So I, it does matter. Um, there is a certain threshold that I anticipate that everyone should be following. And if they're not following it, I'm not going to cruise it and I'm not going to sell it. Um, one of the things that people ask me a lot is, will I be bored on this cruise? Like there's not going to be enough to do there's, you know, there's two, or, you know, it's all going to be for kids or it's all going to be for adults and there's going to be nothing for my kids. So what am I going to do? There are different cruise lines for different families for different reasons. So there are so many different ways that you can make a vacation on a cruise work for you and your family. There are certain cruise lines that are great for multi-generational families, and there are some that are not. There are some that are great for groups of adults that are better than those with families. Finding the right cruise ship is going to make the experience better. I, I often hear people say, oh, I took a cruise in the nineties on, um, Holland America. And it wasn't fun. And I was like 12 years old. Okay. Yeah. It probably wasn't as fun because now cruise lines have changed and they're coming with the times understanding that families travel a lot of times before when people would do a cruise, it would just be adults. So they didn't cater to kids because kids, parents did not have the money to bring their kids with them on a cruise. Now people have money to, or they want to bring bring their kids on a cruise. So they want that whole family experience or the whole multi-generation experience. So there are so many cruise lines that cater to that. Maybe you have a multi-generational family where you only have one living grandparent right now and they're, they don't want to have to spend the money on a full two occupancy cabin. Well, there are ones that you can get a single person occupancy for going on a cruise. And then your family might be a family of, you know, five, and you want to split up between 
two staterooms. Well, you can get two adjoining staterooms and you're all set. So there are different options that are available to no matter what kind of cruise you are. Another myth is that people think that you have to dress a specific way or that there's some formal night on your cruise. There's no formal night on your cruise. So you don't have to worry about that. There might be a formal night on your cruise, but it's typically optional. There are very few cruise lines that make uh, for a formal night mandatory. And you also can skip going to the main dining room that night and not do it. So a lot of the um, cruise lines have gone to a more casual or relaxed idea of what it is to go to dinner. So typically they just, there's no bathing suits when you go. Sometimes they'll say no shorts. Yeah. I still see people in shorts. Jeans are fine. Pants are fine. Um, you can decide, you know, dresses are fine. You also can get as dressed up as you want. If you love that formal feeling and doing that formal stuff, that's fine. You can get dressed up and do that. And that could just be part of your cruise. It's wonderful. Either way you look at it, it's wonderful. The only time that there could be a dress code is in some of the specialty restaurants that cost an additional charge on your cruise. And that's when you want to make sure that you have the proper stuff with you. Like sometimes men have to wear a jacket. Uh, often there's no sneakers allowed and no jeans, no shorts. So those are just things that you need to think about if you are doing any of the specialty dinings when you do a cruise. And with going along with that is that you have to eat at a specific time. A lot of cruise lines have this, you know, flexible dining time now where you don't have to eat at any specific time, but they, they call it, you know, um, my time dining or choose your time or flexible time or any time dining in which you're not choosing a seating for when you're going to eat, but you just show up and you say, Oh, it's the four of us. And we're here to eat. And they find you a table for the four of you within like, you know, 10, maybe 15 minutes of you showing up. Sometimes you get sit seated right away. I I'm talking about every cruise line. So <laughs> it's kind of hard to, uh, put that in perspective there, but you know, some people like that more. I always choose the my time dining because I often find that, you know, the early time might be nice for my son, but with our excursions, we're always missing the dining time and the late time is waiting too late after we've gotten back on the ship. So it's like, but I just want to eat. So if we are going to eat in the dining room, I always choose the, um, flexible timing so that we can come and go as we need to. I think the biggest thing is that there's no mold for your cruise. Even if you get a you're going on a cruise and the person next to you is going on the cruise, your cruises could be totally different. You might not ever see the person that is in the cabin next to you. You might not ever eat in the same locations as the people next to you. You might not be doing the same activities on board as the people next to you. And you might just have a very different way of doing your cruise vacations. However you do your cruise vacation is the correct way. All right. Well, that will wrap up today's show. Again, I am Lauren. I am a travel advisor. My information is below and I hope that you will reach out if you need any help. And I hope to help plan your most magical vacation. Bye.